five matchup, but now Washington with that four and one record. Good thing started with Brooklyn Carter at the top. Brooklyn Carter uses a ton of speed. She's a typical slapper at the top, but the thing that she's added to her game is the swing away that gives her a little bit more pop with our with runners in scoring position. But to start a game, just needs to put it on and let her wheels work. Sophomore from Inglewood, California. Pitch hard and in on the hands of a slapper, running at a pitcher, very hard to catch up to. There you could see Brooklyn Carter, a little bit of a struggle with that pitch in on her hands with two strikes. The short game is off the table. It goes low. Seventy-three degrees, clear water. Just slight wind. Day for thirteen games happening across the grounds. Part of the forty, all happening here. Clear water across four days. Up the middle, back. Handed glove at second. Relayed over to first for the out. One up, one down as Carter sits down. It's well, and as a slapper, you expect to push the ball to the left side, but with the ball inside, Carter turns hard on it, and Strelo makes a beautiful play. Glove work on point to start this game. Julian Solis, the batter at the plate, had a home run solo shot. Solis, the senior from Corona, California. And we've seen some pitchers really shy away from challenging hitters on the inside part of the plate, but J.C. Hambrick is attacking Washington on the inside of these lefty hitters. Not afraid to take the ball inside. It's at least on the year 250 hitter, 16 at bats coming into this one, four hits. And three runs batted in. Here in the day, part of her six oh. RBI on the season. Ball four. So at least we'll trot down to first. Batting third is number three, Bradley. Well, so far, Hambrick just going in and out with these pitches. She is a pitcher that likes to use a curve and a drop. So that curve will get tight on the hands of a right handed hitter, run away from a right handed hitter, but she fills the bottom of the zone. Bultorf went 0 for 2 in the game against Kentucky on the season. She's hitting 375, slugging 438. It's a big cut at that pitch. Yeah, the first changeup we've seen from Hambrick, it is a pitch that she trusts. We'll use it in any count. So, so far, you're seeing that curve, the drop, and the change, and those are her calling cards. Junior Holtorf awaits. 
goes low, back up off the glove. Just bad luck, it was good reflexes by Hambrick. One will be two now. Is number 24, As a defender today, you can expect to see a lot of ground balls. Defense needs to make sure that they are ready with a curveball, drop ball pitcher. There are going to be a ton of ground balls hit in this game. And the defense is going to have to be awake on every pitch. So the single for Holtorf after the walk from Solis, Sidney Stewart, DP, had a solo shot herself. A two for four game for the sophomore from San Jose, California against Kentucky to begin the day in the Invitational for Washington. When it's an Invitational, Jenny, do the teams get a formal invite like it's a wedding? Do you, do they do. Well, I don't know that it, it comes via mail. mail, but it's a phone <laughs> call. I know they get a phone call. One more that'd pitch. be fun though if, if it showed up with like presents, oh, yeah. right? I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm, might have I'm to, all uh, for it. Might have to be all about that. Yeah, although in this day and age with Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, social media and how information tends to leak so fast, I don't know if you could keep the seal on that. Back up the middle, chance to get a couple of outs, but just the lead runner after the collection from Hamburg to throw over to Chavez over at third. Fifth, well, knowing that Hambrick has Elena that Johnson. hard curve, hard drop, and a really nice changeup, these hitters might be surprised by the pitch up in the zone every now and again. We saw that on Stewart. She doesn't go up often, but you have to be ready. Alana Johnson is swing at the first offering. That ball bouncing off the glove of the catcher, Lindmark, at home. So diving in is Holtorf to third. And that was one of the keys to this game that we talked about early on. Push the run game. Getting a good dirt ball read is so important, and that's exactly what happened there. Washington heads up base running, puts them within 60 feet of scoring. One with runners on the corners, Hambrick throwing to Alana Johnson. Johnson braced off her own foot. Washington team coming in sporting a number six ranking. Began their season out of the country, Puerto Vallarta. Started with a win over number 17, Nebraska, then a win over Utah Valley. Went extra innings with Oklahoma, 4-3. Getting just the state of our game and where Oklahoma's at. When you see that, when you see that a team plays Oklahoma close, it's like, wow, they, they played them really competitive. And after that Oklahoma game, an 8-4 win over Iowa State to close out their weekend. They begin here with a win over Kentucky. A team that went to the Women's College World Series last year as Hambrick sits down Johnson for out number three. A little bit of traffic, but nothing doing scoring wise. Ambrick doing well in the circle to keep Washington from scoring. She's really hitting the corners well, and Washington can't figure it out. Important. Ho Coach Heather Tarr says she's very reminiscent of Gabby Plain in her delivery and in her pitch arsenal. From Santa Fe, Texas. The hitting lineup for the Minnesota Gophers, who stands out for you? I like Jess Oakland sitting in that two spot. She reads pitches well and has really gained emotional maturity this season to put up big home run numbers. That's her goal this year. Begins at the top with Kayla Chavez. Junior five foot six from Chino Hills, California.
pretty cool to be able to be compared to one of Washington pitching greats, Gabby Plain. So while Sydney Peters is a young freshman stepping in, to be compared to one of the best pitchers that Washington has had in recent memory, it's pretty cool. What she's needing to do, though, is just gain some consistency, some competitive consistency in the circle. She has more velocity than Gabby Plain, but has true upspin, true downspin. And so that's hard for a, pit, a hitter sometimes to be able to get on plane with. One, two, sent foul. You mentioned for Peters the up and down nature of the two starts thus far against Utah Valley. Four innings, six strikeouts, one walk. And against Iowa State, just two thirds of an inning, three runs, one earned, three walks, no strikeouts for the youngster. Prepare with the one two offering. That's his out. Glove back down. Umpire crew for this game. Lyndon Baptiste behind home. Tanya Cash at first. Carlos Guzman at third. Hard hit in the sky, out to left, ranging back. Collecting herself to then make the grab, just fielding it in. Nice job by Hobson to adjust. Number nine, Jess Oakland. Well, she was battling the sun out there and left high in the sky with a high pop up. But there's that scouting report for Sydney Peters. More velocity than Gabby Plain, but very reminiscent of the Washington great. one in play to left, dropping over Holtorf and in front of Hobson off the bat of Jess Oakland. Well, the game is so fickle because Kayla Chavez off the bat looked like it might have gotten out of here. And this one, a little jam job, gets over the head of the shortstop Holtorf and it's a base hit. Sophomore Oakland from San Jose. Brings up Maddie Elke. Senior from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Hitting 294. Her senior campaign, 17 at-bats coming in, five hits, four runs batted in, three strikeouts, a walk, two doubles. Over to the right side, under hand, fielded by Solis, flipped over to Nelson for out number two, Oakland advancing to second. Batting four is number 13, Taylor Kraft. Taylor Kraft steps in. And Kraft led the offense a season ago. Led the offense in RBI, slugging percentage, walks, on base percentage. She's a big bat sitting here in the four spot. That season for Minnesota, 38 and 19. Overall, 17 and 6 in Big Ten play. 
went to the NCAA Regional. Actually in Seattle, where they had a one and two record, two losses came at the hands of McNeese State. McNeese ending their season with a one nothing victory. 14 letter winners return seven position starters, one pitcher. They add two transfers and seven freshmen for Piper Ritter in her fourth season, sitting on the cusp, 99 wins. One more win would be 100 during her time at Minnesota. Been to four consecutive NCAAs for this program that is in their 50th season of competition. 17 NCAAs, 29 wins there. One Women's College World Series, four Big Ten regular season championships. 38 women seasons popped up into the glove of Peters. Third out, 0 0 contest here in Clearwater. And Fest, we got some chicken salad, got some arepas. Mmm, I'm getting hungry. Bring it on. It's lunchtime. Tyler Denning, Jenny Dalton Hill. Here, game number two for us, and day number two. Yesterday, there were six games that took place across the grounds. Here in Clearwater today, 13 games all across the ESPN family of networks. We have ESPNU in action, us on ESPN Plus, SEC Network, ACC Network, ESPN2. There's some really good matchups you will see amongst this field. That includes five teams that advance to the Women's College World Series, including this Washington squad, Tennessee, Stanford, Oklahoma State, and we get to see later on this evening, and Florida State runners up in last year's tournament. This ball laced in to begin the inning. Olivia Johnson. But Johnson had a pinch hit opportunity in game one. Hit it to third base in that game against Washington, or in that game against Kentucky. But they're able to punch it through the 5-6 hole and get the inning started in the right way. Johnson on for this Washington team that the big question mark coming in was offense. Avery Hobson made the grab out in left field. Piper Ritter, Minnesota head coach, looks on. For Washington, their head coach Heather Tarr in her 20th season had gone to the Women's College World Series 2017, 2018, and 2019, then a break to 2023. But Jenny, the story, they lost five of their top six hitters. So when you watch Washington this year, it's gonna be who can step in and fill those roles. This in is so far our two looks at the Huskies. We've seen a lot of run production, eight runs earlier today. We've seen back-to-back -back base hits to begin the second. Well, and you've ha you've got talented players for Washington who have bided now, their Valley, time four, waiting for the opportunity Nelson. to be in the spotlight. They've been playing behind very talented players ahead of them and have not gone to the portal, have stayed true to the Huskies and now getting an opportunity to contribute. But laid down perfectly up the third baseline. Nice play charging down by Chavez to make the throw to get the out of Brooke Nelson. But Nelson doing her job to advance Johnson and Hobson. I mean, Brooke now Nelson that made 20. that look so easy. easy. She threw the barrel head out in front, made sure that contact was made out in front of home plate, sacrificed herself to move the Huskies just 60 feet away and put two runners in scoring position. Have you noticed this, Jenny? This has absolutely no bearing on the game, but I was looking at my score sheet. For Washington, you have four players in a row, all whose last names end with O-N. Well played, son. <laughs> I did not recognize that one. <laughs> Kinsey Fiedler, batter at the plate, back up the middle, right into the glove of Hendrick, who will look off the runners and take the out over at first. So after back-to-back -back singles, two outs. Top of the lineup for the scoring position back to the top of the order. Four, Brooklyn Carter. 
Well, as a leadoff hitter, typically people think of just someone that's fast, able to get themselves on. But a piece of the game that is so important is that leadoff hitter needs to be able to swing away with some pop. Knowing that they come up very often with runners in scoring position or runners that need moved. So with Brooklyn Carter standing in and some speed down there at third and a runner in scoring possession at second runner in scoring position at second base. Pushing this ball to the grass gives Washington an opportunity to get on the board. Carter 333 on the season with runners on. 400 with runners in scoring position, 400 with two outs. That's just one RBI thus far. But Washington playing just their sixth game. Big chance here, opportunity to scrap, crack the scoring column. 0-2 pitch, it's up top, in play, out to center field, over the head of DeBoard, who ranges it in. Over the shoulder, some great defense to save some runs. Play in the outfield saves games, and this one definitely was a huge catch for Minnesota to be able to get out of the inning. With to the evening, over to tomorrow, full slate, and then Sunday as well. 40 games, four days, already eight or so completed. Clear water, but some really good matchups. Jenny, is there a particular matchup you have circled that you, you really want to see? I mean, the problem with calling games, if you could call it a problem, is the fact that you don't get to watch the games during the day. So well, the hardest things for us. I know, right? So for me, it's those games in the evening that I'm so excited to watch because you've got some great matchups coming up in the evening, both tonight and Saturday. Sidney Stralo, senior for Minnesota, begins the bottom of the second inning. 13 of this year's 16 teams participating here in Clearwater went to last year's NCAA tournament. Everybody except for Georgia Tech, North Carolina, and Wisconsin, eight of them advancing to the Super Regional Round. It's great early look against quality competition for teams that we fully expect will be right in the mix come tournament time. It's the same dilemma we have when, when we're doing regionals. If you're so locked into your regional that then your, your scoreboard watching, it's like, oh, well, this happened over here. You know, you're trying to collect yourself for the next day. You don't get to really take everything in. So all you fans at home, get the multi-viewer up and enjoy all the softball you get to watch. Well, and we'll give you live look-ins. If big things are happening on other fields, don't worry. We'll, make, we'll let you clue in to what's going on on the other fields. But right now, this is where you want to be. Yeah, starting just after this one over on ESPNU, Florida State, UCLA. Which Noah Watt went on for UCLA this opening of the season. Just the parody in the sport. You had close games with Oklahoma. Washington giving one of those close games to Oklahoma. You saw Florida State be taken down by Charlotte. You saw maybe the biggest surprise for me was the way that UCLA was attacked by um, two run rule losses, one to Oklahoma State. 9-1 yeah, against Oklahoma State and 16-0. Texas. And we've got UCLA. Oklahoma State on this field for our next game. So kind of excited to see the offense that Oklahoma State's going to be able to bring over here to field Oklahoma one. State taking on Wisconsin. Played earlier against Georgia. Georgia went to extra innings. We had our eye on yesterday against Wisconsin, so scrappy Wisconsin team that I think that went 10, correct? We were in sure the midst did. of our production call, so we were locked into our team. So. <laughs> Once again, we just couldn't enjoy it. 0-2 popped up. This ball is not a souvenir. Over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> not a souvenir. Fans were instructed earlier that unless you must fast. return the ball. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're fast in your stash. 
and have a really big purse. <laughs> <laughs> well, no clear bag policy probably you know, here in clear water. Being that right? We're, you're outside, so. I'd say put it in your pocket. Long campers, but... yeah. You know. <laughs> well, you can't put it in your pocket, though. The weather's too nice, so nobody's got a jacket on. You sun's out, enjoying the weather. Well, the there rest may of be us some cargo shorts winter. out there. Yeah, but I'm going to say a softball might stand out. <laughs> One two pitch. This ball is in play. Flipped over to take the lead out at second in Washington. Seen this, Jenny, across both games. Washington has been really sharp defensively. Well, and they're not afraid to just do glove flips. Those glove flips take away so much time. You don't have to transition to the hand. So there is short, whole torque, a little glove flip to Solis. And uh, Nelson with the stretch. Nice little 6-4-3. That is the third double play that Washington has swung today across their two games. Yeah, the other one was a base running miscue by Kentucky, line drive out to the outfield, doubled off a runner at second base. So good defensive plays to take away the threat. So Stralo and Lindmark, the two outs. Addison Lesper. That are at the plate. One of two products of the Lone Star State on the Minnesota roster. Hailing from Thrall, Texas. 0.091 her average on the year. 11 at bats coming into this one. Just one hit, but has walked three times. Struck out once. I'm gonna agree with Heather Tarr. There are Gabby Plain moments in the wind up and delivery of Sydney Peters. But the main difference is just the added velocity that she has where Gabby Plain had that spin move. She made the ball dance. She was a difficult pitcher to hit off of. Sydney Peters still developing into that kind of pitcher. Now batting, number one, Breezy Burnett. Let's move with her fourth walk of the season. Brings up Breezy Burnett. <laughs> Sophomore playing back in her home state from Jacksonville. Three Florida products. I've already had a couple opportunities, Jenny, that I have passed up to give you geography quizzes. I know we Thank you. set I our boundaries that. with that. I mean, your friendship with me is still very new, and I don't need you to challenge that. Absolutely. Just yet. Minnesota going all around. They have players from Arizona, two from California, one from Colorado, three from Florida, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, all with. Single player, three from Minnesota, one from Nebraska, one from Oregon, two from Texas, and four from the state of Wisconsin. So, really great Quite representation all across the country. And they've got great academics. I just don't know that I could handle that much snow. I, I think I'm out. Yeah, I'm with you there. I, I don't do like negative 20. That ball, hot shot past the glove of the shortstop, Holtorf. Looking for a home and in safely. First run of the contest, Breezy Burnett. Maybe in front of some friends and family. The Jacksonville product brings Lesper home for the first run of the game. Well, this ball just had eyes. It made it all the way to the fence. A hot shot past the glove of the diving Holtorf. And then the angle by Hobson out there and left, not sharp enough to be able to cut it off. Huge hit. You had to get that out of your eight hole as well for Minnesota. Yeah.
Morgan DeBoer, the final batter in the order. This Minnesota team that began their season out west. The SDSU season kickoff beat UC Santa Barbara 8-5 in their season opener. Then victory over the hosts, San Diego State 5-3. Lose a 3-0 contest against Stanford. Close out with a 4-3 win over UCSB and then a 3-2 loss in eight innings against Kentucky. Just so happened to be the team that Washington just faced to begin their day and their time. Well, the transfer portal was hopping this summer, and this is one of those players that came out of the portal for Minnesota, Morgan DeBoard coming over from LMU, which has really good offense, led by a former Olympian and UCLA great Taraya Flowers, and so this is a well-trained player sitting at the bottom of the lineup for Minnesota. That pitch set at the bottom of the zone and fanning in it is DeBoard, but... ...to battle back against a one nothing deficit that Minnesota was able to put up in the last and half inning. Washington went against the full complement of pitchers for Kentucky. Spoonmaker started the ace for Kentucky. They chased her. La Cantena generally gets the ball second. So good morning for Washington, but... That run scored, could the Huskies fire up the bats? That's a good way to start the third. So Lee's on with a single. This Washington team, a lot of travel to begin the year. They were already in Puerto Vallarta, then over to Clearwater. Here they will play, after this game, Wisconsin, LSU, and North Carolina. Stay in Florida to play a game in Fort Myers and another tournament in Tampa, a tournament in Eugene, before their first home date that's on March 8th. Play 13 home games in the course of the season for head coach Heather Tarr. He returns five starters. Breakdown is two graduate level players, two seniors, four juniors, five sophomores, and four freshmen. And we talked to her about experience and, and trying to fill the void of those five of the top six that they lost. But you made the point, Jenny, as to coach. We have a lot of experienced players, just not necessarily game experience, but they've bid their time in the program, paid their dues, and now they get their opportunity to make a name for themselves. Well, and not always do you see that kind of loyalty, where players who sit behind great players have the patience to be able to bide their time and then get an opportunity later in their career to be able to be the one in the spotlight. They've learned great lessons behind great players, and now it's their turn to turn it on. Chance to turn to that ball over the head of the shortstop. Oakland coming to cover. Well, and in this situation, as a first baseman, if you have not already set yourself to go to second base, it looked as though she was ready now, to just take 24. the out at first, but she heard the call that they she needed to throw to second base, and because of that, did not get her body all the way turned, did not deliver a strike over to second base. So not only is there no out, but now there's a runner in scoring position. Yeah, that was a call on the field. I misinterpreted the year, too, as they wanted the ball over at second base to get the lead runner in. Solis. Well, and knowing Solis is not the most fleet of foot player on the field, you've got to have that in your head as a first baseman before you get the ball. That's the key to being a good defender, making sure that you have thought through, if I get the ball to glove side, where do I go? If I get the glove ball to backhand side, where do I go? If I get a hard shot, if I get a slow shot, you've thought through all of those plays before the ball comes to you, so you are ready to make the most aggressive and smart defensive play. 2 a pitch from Hambrick, trying to frame it up down low, Lindmark. Stewart, one of the home runs, his team came in Washington to the day with just three team home runs, but two. Clear this morning. It's something pretty good here at 3-0. And it was a huge pitch for Stewart. Up, belt high, inside, and absolutely unleashed. There was no chance for Riley Smith for Kentucky to get to that one. It was a tank over the fence.
Two big strikes for Hambrick to come back out of the 3-0 cow. Stewart thought she walked. Two trots towards first, but gets her looking, does Hambrick. I mean, that's a big strikeout, knowing that Stewart has the hands to be able to turn on it. This pitch sitting knee high, inside, beautiful receive by Lindmark to hold the strike three. So one out, two on. Lana Johnson, who struck out her first time up, places this one into right. Now the runners advance, so bases loaded. One out here in the top of the third for Washington. Now batting number 11, Olivia Johnson. Olivia Johnson had her first hit of the season. Her first at bat. Battery will get together for Minnesota. When Johnson's done fabulous, just blocking up balls in the dirt. I've been impressed by the way that she is a wall behind the plate for her pitcher. And in her first at bat, a big hit to lead off the second inning. to the left, it bounces off the wall. One waved in, second runner being waved. Washington into the lead. Two at bats, two hits for Olivia Johnson. Well, in the way that Johnson was standing in the box, you could tell that she was feeling confident after that first at bat where she absolutely able to unleash on a hard ground ball in the five, six hole. That looks almost like a three quarter swing. That ball went out of here in a hurry to the fence. Minnesota able to get it in quickly, but not before Washington able to put themselves up on top. Now that was a confident swing of the bat. By Olivia Johnson to score Solis. And Holtorf to make it 2-1, still two on with one out. When Tyler, it almost looks like there's times where Cassie Lindmark gets crossed up. She looks as though she's gonna receive a ball inside and then the ball leaks out over the other side of the plate. I don't know if that's a control issue by Hambrick or just a miscommunication by the two. <laughs> Keep an eye on here with the traffic. Home plate umpire Lyndon Baptiste just wants to make sure that there's no cuts or scuff marks on that ball after the foul tip. Count one and two. And we're ready. and three runs batted in on the season. Ball to short, collecting in time. Oakland take the flip.
And that's one of those hard plays as a middle infielder where a runner running in front of you can catch your attention. And that seems to be exactly what happened for Jess Oakland. She gets a little distracted by the advancing. For Washington, Nelson on the season. Three for eight with runners in scoring position. Get the sack bunt her first time up. Washington unable to capitalize in that opportunity. Already seven hits on the board. Foul. And Tyler, we've talked multiple times about how these players have waited their turn to be the everyday starter. While Brooke Nelson has had more opportunities than most as she has played multiple positions, she's pitched, she played first base. I mean, she steps in with m maybe more experience than many of the other Washington players in this lineup. A big power hitter down here in the bottom of the lineup. Big 33 with runners on. So no runs batted in yet this year. This ball ripped, that is in play. Big signal waving home. There is one run, second run in. Another two RBI base knock for Washington, 4-1. I'm going to say that Washington likes the morning on the East Coast. This is <laughs> just ripped down the line, but with a good angle out there and left Breezy Burnett able to cut it down before it gets to the fence. But with so much speed on the base pass, Washington able to play two more runs and a big double for Brooke Nelson. Yeah, I think I, I won't speak for you, was just projecting my dislike of the morning and making it an issue potentially for Washington. They have fired it up, no problem. They could potentially have two wins before it's even lunchtime back home in Seattle. Yeah, good morning to all of our all of our Washington <laughs> fans, right? Pacific you're Northwest sit, viewers, yeah. yeah. You're I hope you're sitting enjoying on a your win. coffee. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting on a win already <laughs> and now off to a three-run lead. That ball rolled over to Strelo at second, who flips to Kraft at first to get the out. Both runners in Hobson and Nelson advance to third and second, respectively. Top of the lineup for the Huskies. Now batting number 44, Brooklyn Carter. Back to the top of the order. And as a middle infielder, you're always looking to see what the hands of Brooklyn Carter are going to do. Knowing that she's a triple threat, she can drop a drag, she can give you a little short game with a soft slap, maybe come at you with a hard slap, but she can also stand in and swing away. In that last swing, she choked up on her grip, which told me she was looking to soft slap to the left side to push herself on. Those are the kinds of things you need to be looking at as a middle infielder to be successful against the kind of speed that is sitting in the box with Brooklyn Carter. 0 for 2 on that last sequence. Fielder grounding out to second, but did get an RBI as Hobson was on third and advances. It's Nelson that is on third in scoring position. So 5 1. Yeah, and so this is just a hard hit to second base. Nice little RBI, but because she took that ball to the right side, it gives an opportunity for Washington to push another one in. Ninth batter that Washington has sent to the plate, so the full complement for the Huskies. Obviously, plenty of softball left to be played, but the early returns on Washington offense being a question look really good thus far. Coach Tarr tries to slot in those new pieces, but brought in a new coach as well, and Victoria Hayward really gave her the reins to take over the offense. Said it really gelled up with the personnel turnover that you have new people, new roles. Well, bring a new coach in, new voice, and empower her to run with it, and so far, so good.
Carter with the count 2-2. Two, two. Ball in play over to second. Straight low to Kraft for out number three. But Washington facing a deficit response. Began last week, but on this young season, this is now the date that has been circled this invitational. Top teams, great programs, great matchups, 40 games, four days, six games yesterday, 13 today. Across SEC Network, ACC Network, ESPNU, ESPN2, ESPN Plus. Tyler Denning, Kenny Dalton Hill, three time national champ. Pleasure to be here with you guys today and bring you some quality action between a Washington team that is top 10 into last year's Women's College World Series against a future number nine, Big Jess Ten foe Oakland. in Minnesota. Minnesota and NCAA tournament team from last year as well. I don't know how fast I'm going to be able to get used to saying Washington in the Big Ten. That just doesn't register. UW, Oregon, USC, UCLA going to the Big Ten. That will happen in August. And with a whole other slate of dominoes that have fallen. Texas, Oklahoma to the SEC. Whole slew of teams. Can, can you tell me every team going to the Big 12? Well, the crazy part about it is some of them already have gone. You've seen a couple of teams move over there for this current season for softball. Yep. Yeah, yeah, with the additions it, BYU, Houston, UCF, Cincinnati that have joined the Big 12. That was the early component, but then Texas and Oklahoma leaving. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, if you really don't keep your, your your finger on the pulse of collegiate athletics as a whole, you can look up and say, well, that was two conferences ago. 2 0. -oh. Maybe the thing that hurts my heart the most is the disillusion of the Pac 12. Well, you asked Coach Tar about that. It, it was a question I was going to ask, so I was glad that you asked it when we spoke with her. And she said it's kind of a dream. And when she said that, it wasn't a dream in the sense of it's a dream that you aspire for. She said it's not going to really be a reality until that schedule first comes out. She didn't necessarily say it was a bad dream. She said it was just the reality of collegiate athletics and know that it's best for the university. and where they're at, especially with the trickle down in terms of, of money to different programs and all that good stuff we won't get into. But she said they really want to enjoy this last go round and the places that they'll get to travel traditionally in their Pac-12 conference slate is Coach Tara, ball of energy. She was pumped up earlier when we talked to her. Her team's hit the ground running here in Florida. Coach <laughs> Chavez was hit by a pitch. Now batting, number Advanced to second. Oakland the out. And these are the additions. Yeah, I you know I love the maybe I'm a traditionalist, but just the regional nature, regional matchups. You love being able to drive regardless of sport, then families, it makes it much easier. But, you know, as the game grows, you know, we, we have to evolve. You look at this Washington team and Ruby Malin, Lindsay Lopez, Celise Sis Bates, Heather Tarr, they all participated with their national team. So this is a global game now. They're, they're no strangers to getting on planes and uh, it ain't like back in the day where you just load up the bus and go to the game as much anymore. For better and for worse. You're right, but I will say this was a decision not made with softball as the forefront, Absolutely. at the forefront, knowing that the travel in the spring is going to be so difficult for these players who are student athletes, not athlete students. And so it's going to be a chore for them to travel cross country multiple times within the year, not just in the pre conference schedule, but all season long and keep up with their studies, which is actually the biggest piece or the biggest component to their daily lives. 
And he'll keep you better at the plate. And a lot of great points to delve into there. It's not like football where you play one game a week. That's a little bit different. And you're on a private charter that's to and fro. You know, I think the onus will fall on the decision makers to try to schedule up. And we've heard rumors about pods and trying to get together that will maybe minimize the travel. This ball on the ground over to third. Nice, Tapping the runner as Elke just gives herself up. But then also well, when we were talking about for, for Washington, they've already been in Mexico. Puerto Vallarta back to Seattle. Then they come down to Florida. They'll stay in Florida for an extended period of time. And yes, the emphasis, how many players go on to do something other than play the sport that they play collegiately? Class is important. It is, but maybe COVID taught us that online class is now an opportunity too. And so because of a lot of those remote learning opportunities that are available to players i'm sure spring schedules have been manipulated to have a lot of online classes rather than in-person things on the docket that ball laced fair up the third baseline will bring home chavez scoring from second so taylor craft that ball is well deep down there well, and it Ended crossed over double. the it crossed over the line, signaling that it is out of play, and with that comes a ground rule double call. So, with that ball that hugged the line and found its way beyond the outfield fence, gives Kraft an opportunity to not just have a double but play to run for Minnesota. Be a double for Kraft. And Probably couldn't place that ball any better on that line and with some pace. That's her in scoring position. He's now 5 2 in the bottom of the third. Then you think if I could go back and tell you in your playing days that you could take an online class? What would you have said when you were a player? <laughs> well, you giggle. Internet was just becoming to be a thing when I was in college. So thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> I did not email was something that we all were like, oh, like that's ever going to take off. That's ridiculous. Why not just send them a message? Yeah. How about this? Do you, do you remember? your first email address. What was your first email address? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. It wasn't in college. I did not <laughs> have an email address in college, okay? It was that long ago. Hot man. And, yeah, and yeah, yes, yeah. I am a grandma, okay? I have two <laughs> grandchildren, hey. so legit, I'm old. You've called it out, we're just <laughs> no, gonna no, own no, it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's amazing how it's evolved, you know, where we're at now. If I would have told you that, hey, you, know, you would have 13 games taking over ESPN the second week of the season, and you could watch all your favorite teams. It's that ball bouncing off. You know, even maybe four or five years ago, you would say, there's there's no way. So, you know, it's been amazing to see, and, and to watch these student athletes, how they've adapted to the ever-changing environment and still be able to focus and give us some high-quality softball. 2-2 after the wild pitch. This ball, hard hit out to left into the glove. Four out, number three. 5-2, Minnesota does play one more. Three run contest at the end of three. Runs four hits, two errors. Part of their seven runs that have led, their five, seven hits, excuse me, that have led to their five runs. They've scored 13 cumulative thus far today, Washington. To have a new arm in the circle for Minnesota. Macy Richardson will get the ball. Jenny, what do you know about Richardson? What do you expect to see? Macy Richardson, she's going to ride the freshman roller coaster too and needs to develop some consistency but goes up and down with a rise and a drop and that can be really difficult to adjust to as a hitter. Oh. 
Martin from Tecumseh, Nebraska. So Lisa Walken is single. Floated in by Richardson. I have a high appreciation for Washington and what they do with their protective equipment as all of them have their last names. And as a broadcaster, boy, does that help. <laughs> well, on the ground, too short, open. Over for the out. Well, and in the circle, you know that Macy Richardson is young, but this opportunity to test herself before conference play bodes well for Minnesota, knowing that they will need to ride her arm through the season. She goes up and down with that rise ball and drop ball, and then moves a ball around the zone with a fastball to spot. I would look out for that changeup. She will throw it and has a lot of consistency with it. Going to Riley Holtor. who singled and then reached via a fielder's choice. Part of that run scoring third inning. Jenny, your one piece of advice, all, all players that are going in, uh, young players that will be freshmen, what would you say to a freshman? Work hard, put your head down, don't look up, and just grind because it's a long season, it's a marathon. Don't worry about the ups and downs of a day. I think the biggest thing that hurt me my freshman year was thinking things were worse than they really were, and then believing things were better than they were. So finding a way to stay consistent and not let the highs get too high and the lows get too low. Crawling in at 48. And when you face a pitcher that doesn't come in with as much velocity that maybe you've been used to seeing, throwing in low 60s, 62, 64, sometimes your timing can be a little bit off. Washington used to facing very high velocity pitchers, and so needing to find their timing against Macy Richardson is something that needs to happen on, before you get to the on-deck circle. Get that timing down. 2-2, waits on that one, laced out into left, but into the glove of Burnett for the second out. What, what's the key as a, a batter when you go from a velocity change in pitchers that you're trying to, before you step into the box, adjust? It's all about toe touch or stride. And if you're not a stride hitter, you've got to make sure that that first move forward is done with control. You never want to dive in and lose your weight out of your backside. That's why a changeup is such an effective pitch. It pulls you out of your legs. It pulls you onto your front side, so you lose the power from the backside in your barrel. So making sure that you can stay in your legs is so important when you see velocity changes. Oh, one. So break that down for us and what you see with, with Stewart here and what's happening with the toes with that lower half. Well, and she's a very quiet hitter. And what I mean by that is not a lot of movement. You unwind in a swing from the bottom up. The bottom half of your swing moves first, and the barrel should be the last thing through the zone. So very quiet toe touch, very still in her body, which allows her eyes to track clearly. But her toe touch or her stride, very calm, very quiet, and then a huge, powerful push with that back leg and hip coming through while keeping the head still. And folks, that's all working in conjunction in well, uh, half a second. What's, what's the time you, um, you, you're talking about? It depends, right? When you're facing like a Nigeria Kennedy who's thro throwing 74, you've got about a 0. 0.4. 
No, oh wait, I was talking to uh, Rachel Lawson about facing Nigerie Kennedy. She said you have about a point two six to get your now swing off. She said in her hitters Johnson. swings take about point four five to be able to go from toe touch to contact. She said, so there's times where as a coach, I tell you, close your eyes and swing <laughs> because <laughs> there's just no time. So you've got to train at very high level. This ball hit hard, so after the walk to Stewart, Alana Johnson aggressive with the first pitch offering, and that goes to probably the point of the conversation that we're, we're having where Johnson, really, if you're dialed in there and watching the pitcher, when you step into the box, you know what you're looking for. Correct, that's your job. When you step in, your timing should already be set. The only time there can be a timing hiccup is if a new pitcher is placed right before you get to the bat, get to your at bat. But more than anything, your timing is your responsibility as a hitter. The changeup is a timing disruptor, and that's why it's such an important pitch. That's the pitch that Ruby Malin for Washington really needs to hone in this year to be more successful. Here's a batter that has showed some extreme confidence across the day and across the last two that we've seen. A single, both times, two RBI. Last time up for Olivia Johnson. Well, and one of the key characteristics of being a good hitter is making sure that those eyes stay still through your swing. If you've got a lot of head movement or a huge jerk in your swing, it jigg jiggles your eyes and you lose the ball. Victoria Hayward has come in as the new hitting coach for Washington and she's brought in some absolutes that need to make sure that they are in every swing, but she's allowing these hitters to be their own individual player. One of the keys that has to happen, though, is a strong bottom side for a big hitter and a head, head that stays still. Got some weights on that. And in, bounces out to the right center. Both runners will be waved. Olivia Johnson on an absolute tear. RBI three and four of the day to make it 7-2 in favor of Washington. Yeah, if there was a player of the game at this moment, I'm going to put Olivia Johnson up for that award. She has been so pivotal in her at bats, and they're now a three for three day, four RBI performance, and puts herself in scoring position. What a day thus far for Johnson, pushing her team a 7 2 lead. Lana Johnson and Stewart are the two that score. Avery Hobson singled back in the second, which via a fielder's choice. Last time up, scored a run. Time pitch to the back. Sorry. With, with that pitch to the backstop, what that does is it moves the runner, and now it gives Avery Hobson an opportunity to swing away rather than having to use short game to move Johnson over to third. So the defense is going to be pulled in, which opens up opportunities to punch this one to the grass. I'm all four. Yeah, your analysis, what you had was much more higher contribution level than what I was going to offer. The, the schedule, I was going to say, these two teams together historically, Washington has dominated four, 10 Brooke wins, Nelson. just one loss, one tie in the all-time series between these two teams. So the walk to Hobson, runners on the corners, or Brooke Nelson. Little safety play out. on. Yeah, sorry, Tyler. 
Um, a little safety play on with a fake throw to second, knowing that that was not going to be the issue. The out needs to be recorded by Brooke Nelson. Give no opportunity for more runs to come around. Hobson with the steal. Big cut by Nelson. Let's go back, Jenny, to what you were talking about. Well, in a first and third situation, second base open. Right there, the catcher, Cassie Lindmark, gives a little fake throw to try to draw Olivia Johnson off third base, but everybody knows that she's not going anywhere. Inning hit started out with two quick outs, Solis and Holtor. So all of this coming with two down, the walk to Stewart. Single from Alana Johnson to RBI double by Olivia Johnson, the pass ball that puts her on third. But Minnesota able to get out with the catch in left field by Bird. Number six, Washington and Minnesota Huskies right now up 7-2, joined by Minnesota head coach Piper Ritter. And coach, what are you seeing from your team right now as you guys try to fight back into this one? Um, you know, we're doing a pretty good job of uh, battling um, at the at the plate, I think, defensively. And as pitching, we've given up 11 um, bases that they didn't earn. This is a really good hitting team, so we got to be better at that. Well, and being from Minnesota, sometimes you don't get a lot of opportunities on the dirt. How hard is it to be able to come out here and execute right away? Um, you know, we weren't necessarily out on the dirt last week, but we were um, two weeks ago. So we do get a chance to, and then we have a training trip, so it's not an excuse. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. New arm in the circle for the Washington Huskies. So Sydney Peters, who began things, will give way. Number 18, who maybe. Had the ball slip out of her hand. Lindsay Lopez comes in, 2.63 ERA. Yeah, and that's just a pitch that gets away from Lopez, but I like the, uh, the fact that the batter, Lindmark, dropped the barrel so it didn't make false contact and record actually a foul ball. So good heads up play by the batter. That actually happens a lot more than it sure would, does. You would think I've seen that quite a bit. You just leave it up there. And you're like, well, I don't have to move it, but sometimes the ball hit it. So Cassie Landmark, Landmark, excuse me, the catcher will begin things. Last time up, hit into a double play. Lopez Sr. from Santan Valley, Arizona. High school at Austin Butte, previously at Arizona State. Ball over to third, planning off the bat, get a little bit of leverage, make the throw. Fiedler for the out. There well, is Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, she was a huge arm for Washington last year. Through 94 Madison and two thirds Westford. innings. Westford. A good split from strikeout to ball ratio. 89 strikeouts, 25 walks has come in. She and Ruby Malin were the one-two punch to be able to come back. The hitters. Ball popped up. Leshbert out into left field. Hobson makes the catch for out number two. Two up, two down. Timmy Peters, three innings, three hits, two earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts, two wild pitches across the 14 batters that she faced. Yeah. 
was Breezy Burnett that brought home the first run of the ball game in her first at bat. Peters sitting next to her head coach. Three one grabs the bottom of the zone. High patience from Burnett, comes down to first. Now batting number five, Morgan DeBoer. Minnesota will get another game today, facing off against Georgia Tech. Morgan DeBoer struck out in the second inning. Ball in play to the pitcher, trying to shovel over. That'll allow Burnett, speedy to home, in to plate the run. 7-3, so with two outs, Minnesota capitalizes on the walk in the air. Well, and this is just savvy base running, a drag bunt knowing that the pitcher has to cover that area with the first baseman anchored to first base. Minnesota takes advantage of just a huge miscue by Washington. Lopez in the circle, throwing that ball away and gives Minnesota an opportunity to come back in. It goes back to the top of the order with the running and scoring, runner in scoring position as Kayla Chavez is hit by Lopez. Jess Oakland. Oakland one for two. Singled in the first, struck out in the third. Oakland, one of three all Big Ten players returning. She was part of the all freshman team and a first teamer in the conference. Impressive to come in as a freshman, do such in the Big Ten at the shortstop position. Minnesota team is that ball down right in front of the catcher, allowing the board to jump into third. Lopez struggling to find her groove in the circle. That ball out to right, one run in is crossing, does DeBoer, Chavez holds at third. But a little rally being put together by Minnesota with two down. Well, and to have the bottom of the lineup be able to flip things back over to the top with so much speed and power on both ends of the spectrum for Minnesota. Such a good job of execution with a runner in scoring position, put the ball in play, allow the ball to hit the grass, push more runs across, and Minnesota now within three. RBI yeah. single for Jess Oakland, Maddie Oakey. Pitch by 
Lopez there to get Elke. Looking low, 0 for 2, two ground outs. 4 3 3 U. When Maddie Elke does have power, but it's not the kind of power that usually leaves the yard. She had two home runs last year. She is a leader on this team, but of the 43 hits she had last season, 20 of them were for extra bases. She led the Big Ten in doubles, and with speed on base, that would help right now. This leaves the bat out there into the glove over at short, but Minnesota gets a couple to trim it to a three-run deficit. Sunday night, taking on UCF over on the mothership, ESPN. Well, that would be a big bounce back for UCLA coming off of their last weekend. Secure a victory story here, though, Minnesota. Cuts into their deficit, 7-4, but... They also put a new pitcher into the circle. Introduce you to such in a moment. Giselle Alvarez, the batter at the plate for Washington. Is Coach Tar dipping into the bench now? down the first baseline, back there. Top of the lineup for Washington. Now batting number 44, Brooklyn Carter. New pitcher in the circle for Minnesota. Jessica Snippis comes in, young freshman for the Gophers. Snippis from Rosemount, Minnesota. Oh, laced to the left of the shortstop. Oakland. The top of the order in Brooklyn Carter. Big smile after the base hit. Yeah, first hit for Carter in this Jillian game. She was 0 for 3 heading into that one. But Jessica, Jessica Snippis steps. Jessica Snippis steps in. Uh, ball elevated in the zone. Likes to go with that east-west movement with screwball curveball combo. Has good upspin too. But it's that changeup that will be a difference maker for her. She's got to get that one going. Jenny, Minnesota first five games this season, committing four errors, leading to two unearned runs today. They've committed three errors, five unearned runs, and that was the message when we spoke with Coach Witter. Also a very valid question from you, and it's a point that we always make it with teams that are coming from colder climates. It's the throw down to second and Carter into, but just asking how many days and how much time and how much work they get outdoors that is a factor for teams and sometimes it's well you know we've gotten to hit indoors but we didn't get to do anything outdoors defensively and being on the dirt that is a matter of fact yeah, and that question was met with zero disrespect it was simply tell me where your where your fielders are at ball back up the middle hard hit At least. Well, and that's the smile that I think Heather Tarr has been waiting for, knowing that transferring is not easy and she has struggled to really get her feet underneath her. But here today in Clearwater, she has found her swing again. Very powerful swing back up the middle and runners on the corners now. Riley Holtorf. What's your early impression through the, the game and a half that we've seen of this Washington offense and how it can evolve over the course of the year? 
I think this team is set, setting themselves up for a really strong year. Obviously, the run through the Pac-12 will tear every offense down, knowing that it is tough competition week in and week out. But this team has solid swings, and they are putting them together, stringing them together to be very successful. While these players may not have been the ones in the spotlight last season, these are very talented Huskies who are now just figuring out their rhythm. And with a new head coach or a new hitting coach in Victoria Hayward, they've got a solid base to be able to go back and just sharpen up things that happen during the week. But a nice little base hit into left plates another run. Get the RBI for Holter. Oh, yeah! for Solis, this ball hard hit out to center, but ranged in by DeBoard for the second out. Number 21, Alana Johnson. Ball on the ground, over to short, having to navigate the traffic. We saw that earlier when you talk about some of those things is now the runner diving back into third. So in safely as Solis could have ended the inning, but how hard that could be for a shortstop just when you have to navigate through the traffic of the runner in the base path. It is a lot, and if it if you even pull your eye off of it for a moment, you get in trouble. What you're always taught to do, though, as a shortstop is to make contact with the runner, not in an aggressive, mean-spirited way, but if you make contact with that advancing base runner, then it's... The play is over, the runner's out, and in this situation, the inning would have been over. Yeah, as a defender, you're entitled to, to that space. Is now, this makes it very interesting to bring up Olivia Johnson, the hottest bat, arguably, here in Florida. Three for three, double, two singles, four runs batted in for a six-hole hitter in Johnson. Well, and what Johnson is doing is creating a resume that's going to make it hard for her to come out of the lineup. She is a catcher and is catching this game, but on the days or games that she is not catching, her bat is something that needs to be in the lineup. Bases loaded. Hard hit ball out into left, but good defensive. Focused by Burnett to get her team out of the jam. Four, five, six coming up, but we will speak with Heather Tarr. My head coach, Heather Tarr. Coach already won victory. Tell us, though, about Olivia Johnson. She looks really confident at the plate. She's uh, she's one of our juniors, so she's kind of one of our most veteran players at this point, but she's kind of been waiting her turn this year to get in there, and obviously we know we're going to use her, but uh, she's having a good day so far. Well, and you've got a lot of arms in the circle. You've been able to use quite a few of them here today, but what do you like so far out of the circle for your Huskies? Uh, we're just getting time on the dirt, uh, facing other people than ourselves, which feels good, and um, just trying to play Husky softball. Coach, thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. Yeah, we talked to so many coaches that when we asked them, you know, what are you most excited about for Clearwater and the start of the season? And most of their responses were, we're just so grateful we don't have to face each other. Our pitchers are so tired of facing the same batters. Our batters are tired of getting beat up by our pitchers. And so a lot of these teams just so excited to be able to face other players, other teams, and test themselves on the dirt. Well, and still bears mentioning. We, we set it for Washington if you didn't see the first game that they won against Kentucky earlier. That was a 6.30 local start for them. When you look at the Washington notes, this one bloops in to begin the inning for Minnesota on is Kraft, but then 9.30. Tomorrow they will begin at 7 a.m. local against Wisconsin, but this stretch of a long no, Florida run. Two, Sydney this team is looking very much impressive and figuring to be a player within the Pac-12 in their last go-round before 
I mean, the Big Ten, the Big Ten logo adorned on the Minnesota jersey. Lucy Hooper was the one who was wearing it. Be a pinch runner coming in for Kraft. Trello a walk and a fly out to left field. What are you seeing mechanically? Anything from, from Lopez? It's funny you say that because that's exactly what I was looking at. She's got kind of a hidden delivery from behind the hip. And so as a right-handed hitter, that delivery is a little bit blocked. And so your last look at it is up above her head and then it basically just comes out of her, out of the thigh. As long as her arm is, it, it's, it's, a it's a hidden delivery, and that's exactly what I was trying to figure out if these hitters were going to struggle with. So it may be day one for us, but we are locked in. Right on it. Impressive, Tyler, impressive. You see it with Lopez since she came in relief-wise, that first pitch that, that she threw sailed over the head of the batter, and. Maybe just trying to get a hold on so her command, literally. That's a good hitter's eye, and what you see is trying to duck down low as Strelo will trot down to first and put two on for Minnesota to begin their turn at the bottom of the fifth inning. Well, and it seems as though Lopez is more comfortable throwing to her hand side rather than coming across to glove side. And typically what you see out of a lefty pitcher is a solid curveball that writes in on the hands of a right-handed hitter. But against Stralo there, she stayed away, away, down in the zone. But I'm expecting Lopez to really command that curveball and get it in on the hands of these right-handed hitters. So when you see those things as a hitter, how do you try to capitalize on it, or do you just stand in and put the onus on the pitcher to throw strikes? Well, the difference between baseball and softball is however long a pitcher's arm in softball is, that's where the ball's gonna be coming from. And as a baseball pitcher, it's difficult because you've got a lot of arm slots, overhead arm slots that a pitcher can throw from. And so it, for me, I've played both baseball and softball, and I feel like hitting softball, for me, it's easier to track a pitcher because the length of the arm is where the ball will be coming from every single time. There's not arm slots that you need to look for, but a little conversation from assistant coach Lance Glasso, pitching coach for the Huskies, comes out to the circle to give a little bit of a conversation to his battery. Coach Glasso. Been in Washington 14 years, so quite the long run. Okay, Coach Glasso and Coach Tar. Well, and that was not a conversation meant because of concern. It was probably just something he's seen from the dugout to tweak some mechanics to make sure that she becomes a little bit tighter on the zone. Her misses have been very big rather than having them be competitive balls close to the zone. Cooper and Stralo on. Leshber, .083 her average on the year, but did earn her fourth walk. The OBP is up over 300. Missed just her 13th at bat. Floaty change sometimes hits, sometimes misses. I'd like to see that be a little bit more consistent too. Lopez had 94, almost 95 innings pitched last season. She's very good. It's just coming back into a new season and settling back into new routines. 
really really relied on the rise ball last year. It's an elite level changeup, but is throwing more drop this year to try to change the eye of the hitter and get out of that rise ball swing plane. Potentially a big out too is Breezy Burnett is sitting on deck and has been a spark plug for Minnesota as they've tried to fight their way back in. But to your point, Jenny, we talked so much about scouting reports in the book, quote unquote, on hitters, but there's a book on pitchers as well that then the onus falls upon them to develop the repertoire, add to the arsenal over the off season. Is this one into shallow center. Carter dropping to the grass, slides to at least keep the ball in front of her. Make the throw in the play to get the out at second. Well, and that is such a hard play to make, not just as a defender, but as a base runner. It's dropping right there in the Bermuda Triangle of short, second, and center. But how far do you get off to be able to advance, but also to be able to get back if the ball does get caught? That's a tough play for a base runner and there Washington able to capitalize with a ball close to second base. So the fielder's choice puts, puts Lepcher over at first, second out for Stralo. That second Hooper in scoring position. And at the double was in the second, the walk was in the fourth. Ball in play, two second, the out at second. Washington leads eight faces, returning names. Teams that we expect to be really competitive in their conferences, potentially play for another spot in OKC. Five of the teams in the field here advanced. Florida State, Oklahoma State, Stanford, Tennessee, and Washington. 13 of the 16 participants in this field were in the NCAA softball tournament last year. We were talking in the break. Jenny, 12-12, Northwestern and LSU. It's on SEC Network right now, but what's up with the offense down here in Florida? I mean, did they both kick four field goals or like what in the world is up with those scores? I do not anticipate, I did not anticipate that kind of offense here in Clearwater. That could be a perceived shot at Big Ten football in Northwestern. Just <laughs> if, it was I, if it was Iowa, yeah, I'd say, you know, for sure. But LSU, yeah, that's a, a good one. If you're, you're in with us, you can definitely get your multi-viewer up and watch multiple games. There's a lot of action going on and you should take it all in, but keep it locked. To softballs, this is a great way to usher in the season. I know years past it would be you're just score checking and hey, what happened out in California? What happened in Florida? Now you get to watch it all. Well, and to your point, we were talking about how the game has changed and how it's evolved. Well, the addition of ESPN and their commitment to putting these games on TV has really opened up the eye of the fan and the viewer to be so much better versed in who is good, who is not, what to anticipate week in and week out. And as a parent, when I sent my daughter to college to play softball, I didn't worry about how close to home would she be because I knew I could flip on the TV and watch her play. The runner going, Hobson is in safely to second. When Jenny, to your point, if you build it, they will come. And I think we have seen across all of Women's collegiate athletics, the explosion, women's basketball, the numbers that we've seen there. Big news in women's basketball last night. Caitlin Clark becoming the all-time leading scorer. We saw in volleyball in Nebraska breaking the all-time attendance record. Over 90,000 fans coming out. Huge numbers from OKC last year. The Women's College World Series, so more there people get to see and they like what they see so we're excited to bring it to you two one pitches down low
Nelson into shallow right field. And it does tag up, taking third, Hobson. Well, and as a right fielder, you make that catch, you expect to see a runner take off right away, and so you gear up for a big throw. When she didn't see the runner go right away, she kind of got that ball in a little bit more slowly, and so kind of a delay steal over there of third base after the fact. Little floaty pitch coming in, a big swing and miss, but out there, Ball collision on that stolen base is what gave her the second base, and then that play out in right, what helped her advance over there just 60 feet away from home. LSU just walked it off against Northwestern to win 13-12. That ball dropped in, Fiedler. So the Washington Huskies showing their prowess at the plate. Double-digit hits. Now 14 in the contest. Top of the lineup for the Huskies. Now batting number What? <laughs> I just do not Carter. expect to see that kind of number. Offense is good. I will run on a pro offense ticket any day of the week. But laid down, Brooklyn Carter, top of the order. Speedster trying to get down to first good defensive. Synergy by Minnesota but it does bring the run in. Now batting number 17, Jillian Solis. We're coming up, we'll close out our day. Here on field number one, number eight, Oklahoma State against Wisconsin, 3.30 Eastern. That is slated here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll get you first pitch time as soon as we know it. Did it give me an early, you know, maybe like four or five teams to watch out, outside of the obvious? I don't know. I When it comes to teams across the country, are you talking about here in Clearwater or just across the country? Just in, yeah, in general. I don't know, I, I always, for selfish reasons, have my eye on Arizona. A tough run for them last year. Are they gonna be able to pick it up and come back and make it to the postseason this year? Um, so I'm watching Arizona. UCLA is also another team that intrigues me. Are those big losses before coming into Clearwater, are they gonna be able to turn things around? So far, they're playing right now on field nine against Florida State, so that's a big game for them too. They're ahead, 6-5, bottom of the fourth, but when it comes to other teams around the country, I wanna see, you know, the liberties of the world. I, Liberty is a team that intrigues me. Are, they always play a really tough schedule. Um, UCF is another team here at this tournament that I usually circle. Coach Cindy Ball Malone, a coach that gets her team's postseason ready. She actually coaches the national team with Washington coach Heather Tarr. 2-2 two -two pitch with two outs. Ball bounces off the glove of Chavez over at third, so the runners will be safe. Actually was a guest of UCF two years ago in the regional round, and that was their first time hosting. It was very exciting. They were the 16th seed, got that last opportunity to host, but now they've transitioned into a new conference in the Big 12, but you've seen just the trickle down. You use UCF, we were talking earlier, McNeese State team that pulled off some upsets. We've seen it for ULL for years, but the resources that schools have started to commit to softball and then the winning that follows with it that really then can make the tournament very interesting. And it's no longer, Jenny, just that that chalk that we had seen maybe in years past where it was like, okay, you know, here you go, I'll tell you the eight teams that are gonna advance. That's not the case anymore. No, and you bring up a good point. Well, UCF number was the number 16 seed that year and had to travel in to play Oklahoma in Super Regionals. Maybe the team I have circled the most is Clemson, who has never made it to the Women's College World Series. Valerie Cagle, the National Player of the Year a year ago, 
they matched up. They were the 16th seed and matched up against Oklahoma. It took them to the, like, nose to nose. Those were some of the most exciting Super Regional games. I would love to see the RPI seed out Clemson in a different spot this year and see if they can make it to the World Series. Talese got on with the single. There's your second RPI reference. I love it. <laughs> well, and coaches are aware of it from the very beginning, yeah. knowing that, yes, it's important to hit 500, but you also need an RPI that gives you that at-large bid if you don't get the automatic qualifier. That's why you sign up to come down to Clearwater and get to play tough opponents. 9-1-2, two up for the Golden Gophers, trailing by five. There, that's a lounge off in the yeah. outfield. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Denning, Jenny Dalton Hill. Game number two for us on the day. Kick things off with a Washington victory over Kentucky, a top 25 matchup. And then Huskies, quick turnaround, but riding that momentum. One of the big things that we were watching for for this Washington team was their offense. And their offense has been on display, but that has really been the storyline across. This invitational thus far, offensive numbers are up. Offense up, pitching and defense to be determined. We'll put it that way. Well, and you also look at the way that the defenses are playing. It's almost as though they're not comfortable yet back behind their pitchers. A lot of offense. Yes, the ball is getting hit hard, but we're seeing some miscues defensively that may be getting recorded as hits. And I'm just gonna say I'm a little jealous that I'm not playing now with this kind of scoring because I think How many that more hits you, would you have had? some of these should be errors in my opinion. And I'm not gonna say who's doing it or why, but when it comes to the offenses, are they inflated because defenses just aren't ready to back them up yet? Have they not had enough time on the dirt back behind their pitcher? On the ground, out of the base path for the out to begin the inning to get the board. Jenny, if I understand correctly, and if I've listened to you and all your counterparts, you, lineup, generally it's the pitching and defense that's now maybe that ahead of the hitting at this time of year, or Chavez. where would it be? I don't know, it's hard to say right now because with so many scouting opportunities with all the technology available you can go in and scout a pitcher early and have a huge just database of what am i going to see what does it look like can i be ready and it seems as though this season maybe the hitters are a little ahead of where pitching and defense are well and if you to your point you made earlier a hitter is tired of facing your own pitching eating the same meal, so to speak. Time to go out and feast somewhere else. And you, know, you can watch all that and say, all right, I'm expecting this. You know, do your scout, be ready to go. Well, and, Just and also, well, no, and when it comes to hitting, you can hit all year round. You can go in a cage, you can take BP, you can work on your skills. Live pitching is the piece that can sometimes be the unknown. But so far, it looks like these hitters are ready to go. Lopez looping one in. Seems like this inning, and granted, just two quick outs, but Lopez maybe a little more control than we'd, we'd seen the previous two. Well, we know that she likes speed change, and so she comes in throwing a couple of different speeds and just doing a much better job of finding the zone early and staying tight on it. 
She gets a one, two, three inning to protect her team's five run lead. Heart of the order, four, five, six, do up for the Huskies. St. Pete Clearwater for fields in action. We are at field number one. Second game of the day for us. We have one more, Oklahoma State, Wisconsin, 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one. Big stretch out over at first. Runner will be safe. Well, and there is no video here. replay here in Clearwater, but I like this call. Gives her an opportunity to go talk to the other umpires. She had a look down the line, but she's going to go ahead and employ the other umpires to see if the foot did stay on the bag. I think that's a great stretch by... Cox, Cox, over there first now. By Cox yeah. to be able to rein that one in. Will be scored as an error at short. So Sydney Stewart gets on to begin the seventh inning. So Washington can pad their lead to try to protect. Minnesota trying to keep it at such. Sports ready to go. When Sydney Schwartz out there in the circle is all about spins, multiple speeds, loves the drop, throws the rise, but also throws an off speed rise. She does a good job of just keeping a hitter's timing disrupted. Two two count. Okay. Up top. Sits her down. That is a nasty off speed rise. When that ball comes in and it looks like it's gonna sit belt high, it's usually gonna be a big swing. But then because she's able to take some velocity off, the swing is already through the zone before the ball reaches it. Great pitch for Schwartz. If you notice up in the scoreboard, score bug, excuse me, that clock, pitch clock system, action clock being used in Clearwater, provided by Whistle Stop. Something that has been instituted for here in Clearwater. See it in SEC play, not a mandatory rule, it's just being integrated. It's an opportunity to test. Bring a little more pace to the game, and it's an action clock as Jenny made the point worth reiterating is both there couldn't be actionable offenses versus both the batter and the pitcher. If the batter is taking too long, then strike can go to the count. If the pitcher is the one that's taking too long, it can go to the pitcher. And that right now is being used, that clock you see, high left frame, initiated by the third base umpire to begin that countdown but well within the visibility, so the players, coaches, everybody getting used to that new flow of the game. Johnson hits it foul. You like the idea of the, the action clock? I actually do. I felt like we were getting so far away from the heartbeat of the game with hitters going all the way back to the dugout, taking so long in between pitches, pitchers walking to the back of the circle and hanging out for a while. 
I, I appreciate that the pace of play is something that shouldn't be manipulated by outside forces. However, we were getting so far away from the true pace of game that something had to be done. And I really appreciate the action clock being instituted so both sides are accountable. Pitching pitch for ball four to Johnson has seen. Bases quite now, a bit number today. Five, Avery Hobson. Tone. I'm out going to be called, it looks like. Well, and I think we breezed right over the fact that Sydney Stewart stole her third base of the year because she's the she's a catcher. Not very often do you see a catcher with the kind of wheels that Sydney Stewart brings Pinch to the plate for Washington. For the Coach Number Tar 10, was talking Piper to us Tidro about how she's 11, the third Olivia fastest Johnson. player on this Husky team. So with her sitting on second base, it gives Washington a chance to score with a ball that can find its way to the grass. Fifth stolen base for Washington. You've really seen the Huskies exhibit every aspect of the game. We've seen the long ball, we've seen short game, execution in that, we've seen defense with double plays, prowess in the outfield, we've seen speed on the base paths. All the different elements that go together. I know they're Pacific Northwest, but I'll say to make a good gumbo. You know, yeah, I'm going to say gumbo is not going to work in the Pacific Northwest. But, now, uh, you know, they a different, you know, seafood medley up there. Now you got the big fish market go. in there Seattle. You so, you know, a good seafood chowder. Over to second, trying to make the fast throw. Stralo to Cox. That will bring another run in. As coming home is Stewart. Just, just a miscue by the infield. A routine ground ball over there to second base, but it looks as though the cleat of Stralo got stuck in the dirt and pulled that throw wide of first base. Delaney Cox, there was nothing she could do but turn and chase, get it down, and Washington able to plate another run. The air will be charged to Stralo over at second their sixth air of the contest. The ball laced foul. Cook Nelson. Washington has jumped right into the party. Yesterday, the story was run scoring. Today, the score, the scoring is the story. Washington, part of that. They, they score in their first game, 10 that they have thus far. One more across to make it 11 4. Number well, and Tyler, Giselle you and I were Alvarez. talking before the day began yesterday, the day before, about how do we think Washington's going to come out? It's going to be an early morning for them. Are they going to be able to get things going? Or is it going to take time for them to grease the wheels? And they answered us very quickly without even knowing that conversation happened because they came out scoring in bunches against Kentucky and again able to put up 10 runs here in this one.
That ripped into left field. Elson getting in to add another to the frame. 12-4 now for Washington. Excuse me, not Nelson. Top of the lineup for the Huskies. Now on this ball on the outside part of the plate, Alvarez Carter. able to take this one, just go the other way with it. Let it travel deep into the zone. Not a crazy amount of movement in that swing, just a release and contact. Alvarez down in the nine hole where she came in. That was her second at bat. Quick up to the top with Carter, who swings at the first offering. Huskies now 17 hits on the ball game. And which gives them 27 hits on the day. I mean, so much offense for Washington. 10 hits against Kentucky, 17 against Minnesota. It seems as though this Washington squad likes the bright lights that Heather Tarr didn't know how it would affect these talented Huskies. Yeah, 20 runs they have scored across their 14 innings. Leading by, find a way to get a rally going. Well, great way to start is with a base hit. On is Maddie Elke. Pitch running at first base for Minnesota. Number Minnesota, seven, the remainder of their Cameron time Grayson, in Clearwater, Georgia Tech, 17, Stanford, Georgia, and LSU. A plenty of quality Nevada, opponents. Number 13, Taylor Kraft. Tyler, you and I will get to see Minnesota again tomorrow in the one o'clock slot against Stanford. But Minnesota has another game today, that Georgia Tech game at five o'clock. Get to see Washington one more time as well against Wisconsin, another future Big Ten opponent. Close things out with Minnesota against Georgia. Georgia so far looking pretty good. And schedule for Minnesota. They not done yet. Take on Georgia Tech. When, when we talk to the coaches before heading into this Clearwater tournament, they talk about how hard it is to manage pitching staffs early in the season, knowing that they don't want need them to be mid-season form right now. They have big, huge matchups and a ton of games back to back to back that these pitchers have to be ready for. So it's been difficult, some of these coaches talk about, managing staffs to try to get them ready for Nobody. conference play, Number but two, also manage Sydney all Shula. the innings that get clumped all together here at the beginning of a season. Everybody kind of had a different stage in development at this time of the year, depending if you have a veteran team, solidified lineup, who your opponent is, what your objectives are. That last one was in foul territory, fielded by Nelson for out number one. Cameron Grayson came in to pitch one, pinch run to the player over on first after the single from Elke. Left the out and stray low the batter. He's walked twice. Two out once. While we see rise ball pitchers climb the ladder and go up 
higher and higher. What we're seeing from Lopez right now is a curveball that she continues to take further and further outside. She brings it in close enough to nip that corner, but then gets a beautiful swing and miss on a ball way off the plate. Goes down low once again. Schwartz batter at the plate representing the last out potentially for Minnesota. Swing and a miss as Lopez found her rhythm as her time in the circle progressed in Washington. They had their rhythm complete across both games offensively at the plate. Jenny, very impressive. 20 runs scored and two wins. And I think what you need is to just keep